Hello, and welcome back to Reactivity TV. I'm Amy Albero, and I'm a licensed therapist. We made it! <laughs> Season finale. I am Chris. I'm not a therapist. But let's be honest. You didn't care last week. You didn't care the week before. Chalk was the pick this week. Chalk was a pick last week. We knew Chalk was a pick the week before. If you needed a degree to know that Chalk was going to be the pick... I got a bridge to sell you. That's not what we do here. It's not that my therapist uh, um, expertise gives me the the fortune teller ability to decide who the the lead is going to pick. That's not what we do here, and you know that by you know however many episodes we've been doing this. I mean, it's then really... you might have overspent on your degree if you can't tell the future with it. Isn't that the whole purpose of being a brain science person? Is you get to predict what people are going to do with their brains? Uh, don't misrepresent what I do. You're going to set up a lot of people for disappointment when they go to their next therapy appointment. <laughs> uh, well, so tell the good people what we're actually doing here. <laughs> okay, fair. So we are here, as Chris laid out, talking about Joan's season of The Golden Bachelorette, season one finale episode. We see the proposals. We see after the final rose. And we have some things to talk about, despite Chris's ideas that there's not a whole lot to say here. We we have some opinions and, and thoughts about what went on tonight. And we will get into all of that and more. But before we do, please be sure to hit that like button at the bottom of this video and subscribe. We know it's the last episode of the season, but guess what? There's more to come. So hit subscribe so you don't miss out on what else we have coming your way next week. Also hit that bell icon so that you're alerted anytime we post new content to the channel. And for the record, I did not say that there weren't things to talk about. There are distinctly three things to talk about. Oh, um, just three. All I was saying was that this was the least suspenseful finale in the five seasons that you've had me watching this franchise. And it has not been suspenseful for at least four weeks. Yeah, no, that's fair. I mean, listen, I'm not going to argue with you at all about that. I, I mean, it, that's what's made. We, we've we been very clear in the last few weeks. It's felt like there there was a, a clear break and separation in the season. And we've been in the back half of the season where we're just kind of like, you know, waiting to, for this moment where we we see them choose each other. Um, and so we, we did it. We made it. Did we're you see here. all the girls crying in the trailer for Grant season? I saw your eyes light up. Big saucer <laughs> eyes twinkles in there it's like let's go let's go <laughs> yeah i'm ready july uh, or july what? uh january 27th let's <laughs> oh, do it. you already know the date and everything oh yes 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 and we've got you know mm, over eight weeks you got some to go. time well <laughs> well before we get into the episode uh details let, we, let's just say that uh it, it's it is about two months two and a half months off but uh we are not just going to sit around and do nothing between now and then we are going to have some dancing with the stars recaps and also we have some uh you know related but not directly correlated to bachelor content that's going to be uh coming out uh over the next two and a half months while we wait for grand season so um don't think that you're just gonna you know have us disappear on you for the next you know eight to ten weeks there, there will be more more coming out between now and then um but let's let's finish this up shall we so pretty much we're opening up with uh, the fallout from Pascal. We move over from Tahiti over to Bora Bora. We get some Nancy cameo. We get the chalk date. We get the guy date. And we get the uh, proposals on the beach. Uh, then we get them in the chair. And we are in and out fast, pretty, clean, easy. No fuss, no muss, no yeah. drama. Straight tight through. Tight 90. Tight 90, yeah. So Nancy's been getting a lot of cameos this season, right? Um, mm -hmm. in, the, in the last few episodes, um, she wasn't really a big player in uh, Gary's season, but apparently she's friends with Joan, so she's sort of the person that they're leaning on to kind of come in and be the cameo, be the, the the consultant, so to speak, right? And we're dealing with the fallout from Pascal. Joan is obviously having um, some, some emotional time with this. Mm -hmm. Anybody who's been listening to this podcast knows that this is a frustrating you know, set of mental logistics and, and gymnastics that get done by people falls right into the trap of risk aversion, right? Where people um, have a greater negative response to bad news than they do to an equal amount of positive news. And 
what we're seeing here is Pascal says, eh, you know, I can't get there. I'm not in love with you. I'm going home. And she basically collapses and can't see the force of the trees, seeing that there were 23 other guys desperate to be with her, right? Including two that are falling all over themselves to be with her right now. And Nancy, in a truly Chris move, walks in and basically backhands Joan and was like, what are you talking about? Chuck and Guy would literally sacrifice their bodies if you said you wanted to walk over uh, hot lava right now. They would dive on top of the lava so you could walk over it. Like, get over this Pascal shit and get your ass to the beach. And I, for one, was like, I'm in, Nancy. I'm in. You're now my new favorite, like, non-player cameo person in the in this series. So, um, that's where we're kind of starting off. So, before I get into what I really want to talk about here, um, and there's a statement in in Joan's face to camera. Anything you want to talk about with this Nancy stuff? Listen, I'm going to go dark I... here in a second. Okay. I, I really like Nancy. I liked her. We both liked her on Gary's season. I thought she was great. I thought she had a, a good backstory, but I think she's probably a little too normal, you know, to be entertaining um, for TV. But I, I've loved the Nancy cameos. I think she's such a great grounded voice of reason. Hey, Nancy, guess what? You could be a therapist. Maybe Chris can't be, but you can be. Because I thought that she had such a nice balance of um, kind of directness logic but also was reassuring and caring I, I thought she handled that really well and she was really authentic when when you know uh joan was saying like i feel like i'm unlovable i've lost confidence and she was like what <laughs> like stop <laughs> and and i thought that that was so, so um that it was like jarring in in the sense of um like i think it needed to kind of uh shake joan out of whatever it is that she was feeling Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I thought, I, th I've thought every Nancy cameo has been wonderful and I've really appreciated getting to see her on our screen in this different way. Yeah. I mean, I, up until this moment was very bored of Nancy. I didn't think that she was adding very much. And then in this cameo, it all came home. It's like, okay, this, this warranted all the screen time they gave her over the last two or three episodes. I I'm, I'm in now. Um, you know, mainly it might, maybe it's because she's promoting a, a view of life that I am a big supporter of, um, but making me a bias party. But that aside, yeah, I was in. Said, mm -hmm. said it perfectly. Yeah. So Joan says something in her face to camera, which I thought was absolutely absurd in that it's so unbelievably obvious. She said, some people do not get love once. Why do I think that I can have it twice? Hmm. I'd like to get your take on this. I'm not sure if you're directly quoting her or if it's paraphrasing, but I caught the same thing for a different reason because of the words that Joan used. And I wanted to ask your opinion on it. What I wrote down in what she said was, I was lucky in love with John once. Will I be lucky again to find love twice? And that I thought was an interesting concept because we hear this phrase a lot, getting, being lucky in love. And I thought that was also worth talking about. So mm -hmm. either way, whether it's your, your interpretation of, of what happened or in what the, the uh, literal words that Joan said, I think that there is something to talk about here. So you, from your perspective, you see this as a very obvious um, answer. So what, what say you here? So, um, Nobody is lucky in love. There's mm -hmm. no luck involved in love. Um, love is choices we make. Um, and as a result, um, we ultimately get what we deserve, right? When it comes to love. There's a, that, 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 there's a lot of reasons why I can say that confidently, and, I, and we'll get into them here in a second. Um, but the thing that I think is more important before we even get to the concept of luck is the 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 multiplicity of it like okay you were lucky once i'm sorry joan you weren't lucky once um why and will you be lucky a second time even if we take on face the concept that luck is involved here the answer is yes you will and the reason is very obvious why um and this is sort of i think what gets lost a lot um within modern society and that is um you had a successful marriage because you are a wonderful human being of high integrity who happens to have 
very conservative, classic, traditional values of what a relationship means, stands for, and what your role is within a relationship. And as a result, those are very appealing qualities to men, and thus you will have your pick of a lot of different men. And that means if your picker is even marginally like decent, you will end up with a man who will treat you the way you want to be treated. And since you come from a worldview that values um, your part of a relationship, you're going to put in the work and effort required to do your part of the relationship. And you, because you had the pick of the litter of guys, um, were able to pick a man who was going to reciprocate that. That is how relationships, successful relationships worked for thousands of years. This is a big reason why um, there's, uh, you know, why, why arranged marriages work so much better across um, the, the world throughout history than people picking their own partners is because once you remove the emotional aspect of things, you, you know, you're, you know, the parents are able to pick and identify what is going to make a good partner, who's going to put in that effort, right? Um, this is also why uh, you know, kind of hookup culture has been so bad um, for for dating specifically for women because it takes away certain aspects of the incentive structure for men to level up and for men to, you know, be at the quality and caliber that somebody like a Joan would want. Um, so no, Joan, you weren't lucky. You have the qualities and character that are appealing to a wide swath of men. Hell, I would marry you in a freaking heartbeat if I were a 60-year-old single man. Right. Well, and, and a lot of other men would. Right. I, I, oh, I see. I see what you're saying. And I'm not this is not a counterpoint, but maybe to broaden it a little bit more. Um, Joan has already had success in a relationship. And to your point, yes, not luck. That was that was effort and work and cultivating um, ways of being with another person and getting along with another person and, and growing a family and raising a family with another person across 30 plus years, you you learn things through that. Um, and that's part of, yes, what you bring to it originally. But not only did you find, were you successful initially in finding a compatible person, but also successful in being adaptable, being agile, being, um, you know, flexible as time goes on. Um, and so you've not only started with really good characteristics about just what it is to be in a relationship with another person, um, but then you've grown more skills about uh, how to remain in a relationship with another person. And so because of the the actual skills, habits, behaviors, yes, values too that you're pointing out, but she's, she's become a really skilled uh, relationship person, which makes her that much more likely to spot that in someone else and also continue to do that for herself. I agree, but there's also things that that, that are, are are missing there as well. And I want to, for those who watch Love Is Blind, what, what, Marissa was Marissa the, mm -hmm. the 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 one who was weeping a year later or whatever that one. So uh, the thing about Joan and women like Joan who are going to be successful in relationships is that they understand what their value structures are. Their value mm -hmm. systems are reasonable and logical and defensible morally, right? And but the most important part of it is that they understand what their moral systems are and what their what their what their value systems are and they can vocalize what those values are and they can identify shared values amongst the the potential suitors right mm -hmm. let's go and look at love is blind's uh, marissa right and i said throughout the entire season that you made me watch of that show that this is a girl who is has no idea what her value system is every episode she's whipping all over the place she will never find a successful um match for her because the most important aspect of a relationship is having shared values. And if you don't know what your own values are, you'll never be able to have shared values. And so what we see is this Marissa girl is just every episode. Some days she hates the military. Some days she loves the military. Some days she, she's a, a radical you know, uh, feminist. Other days she's pro-man. Like she has no idea what she believes in. And, and it's just so chaotic. And then she's trying to date a guy who is very clearly far left, you know, and and she's doesn't know one day she's far left, one day she's far right, and she's just all over the place, right? Um, and obviously that relationship doesn't work out. Like, what's the distinction here between mm -hmm. these are two great extreme examples? One knows what her values are, can articulate what her values are, and is looking for somebody who's going to uphold a shared value to what she has. The other person has no concept of what her values are and is whipping all over the place and can't articulate her values because she doesn't even know what they are. 
One was ve- has been very successful once and appears to be on her path to a second success, and one can't get out of the dating phase, right? I think this is, a, while these are ex- this is an extreme example, I think this is very common. I think in today's society, there's a lot of people that don't really understand what their values are. They're getting their values from TikTok or social media, and they they haven't really thought them through, and they're rebelling against their parents, and they're you know hearing something from some you know professor at university and just running with that, and nobody sat down to really think about what are my value systems, mm-hmm. and it's it's it hurts them in the dating market. Yeah, I, 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 again, I, I'm not, I wasn't dis- disputing your fact at all. Um, and, and I, we, we've talked, I mean, that seems to be the thesis statement of our entire podcast across the five episodes that we have, um, or five seasons rather that we've done together, that our thesis statement is that shared values are what, what is the foundation of a strong and healthy relationship. So I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you, but what I'm saying is, um, that, I, I I do think there is something that you can broaden from from Joan's experience here. That that's all I'm saying. Oh sure. I'm oh oh yes. yeah. No, I I I I agree a hundred percent with that. I, I agree. But I you know I think experience alone is uh, so uh, th- there's a there's a saying that's out there that I I refute all the time, and that is you know um, with with age comes wisdom, right? Mm-hmm. And People use this, and age is really a proxy for experience. The assumption is that if you're older, then that means that that you've had more experiences, and thus you've gained wisdom. And that is, I, I dispute this. It's not the experiences that matter. It's the experiences and and having enough insight um, to and enough and you know the the mental um, willingness to think and review those experiences and see how they fit and how they contradict. Um, or how they support your various worldviews and then uh, allow you to shape you into the future, right? My grandmother is a wonderful human being. She has had all kinds of wonderful experiences in the world, but she's also not a particularly insightful or um, intelligent woman. She's just not, right? And so there's no amount of experiences in the world that are ever going to make her a wise human being. And I, that's not, I, I don't say that to be mean. I love her to death. She's a wonderful human being. But she she will never be wise. It doesn't matter how many experiences she has. This is kind of you know, and and so Joan is a great example of somebody who's had great experiences, but she also is insightful, and she she mm-hmm. is somebody who you know I I think can look you know inwardly at herself and her experiences and and take that and learn from that in a way that well yeah a lot I mean she's just struggle she's, with. she's grounded like her values yeah. are are her compass right. And mm-hmm. that's what helps her make her decisions. I mean, that's why, I mean, we, I've talked about this for years now on, on various podcasts. Like that is, that is what we need in order to figure out kind of who we are and where we're going um, is our own sense of values, our own sense of purpose. I'm with you. I'm with you a hundred percent. All right. So I think we've exhausted my, uh, my first point. So uh, let's, let's get beyond uh, Tahiti and get us over to Bora Bora. So after uh, Nancy departs the boat, which, which by the way, there's three people on a giant cruise ship, like, well, I, I, like cr- how? Crew as well. How, yeah, I mean, well, sure, but um, I just feel like it's get a little boring. <laughs> like, I know they're not they're traveling far, but part of the thing about a cruise ship is like the people and the liveliness and hitting the casino and you know the the stuff and like just having people around and going to the shows. Like, the, like I, I don't know. I just feel like cruise ships are already not my thing. And then a cruise ship with zero people on it. Um, Sounds except amazing for, to me. I, I, I mean, I don't know. That's I, like I, my they, dream. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I know. I, I just, I, who am I going to play volleyball with? Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the big question is who am I playing volleyball with while we're, while we're cruising to Bora Bora? Um, but so, uh, so we get over to Bora Bora and this is where all the magic's going to happen. This is where we're, we're meeting Joan's family. And this is where we are um, going to eventually get our potential proposals. Right. So we open up with Chuck. So Chuck goes in, uh, meets the family. I think it's fair to say this goes really well, um, but I was kind of hoping for a little more pushback from the son. The son, so Joan has a son and a daughter. Allie, I well, think, he has, is the, he has four kids, but only two of them are present. Oh, is it? Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's true. So um, we don't really get much from the daughter. Um, you know, th- she's kind of a non-factor here, but the son, he's like stone faced and he's looking Nick. like he's going to yeah. be a, a, a difficult character to win over. 
and I'm I'm like here for it. I'm like, yeah, you run them through the ringer. You you run these guys over. Like I want I want to feel some pushback. I want to feel some discomfort. We've had no discomfort for weeks now. You're my you're my guy. Give me discomfort. And you know they that chocks it down. He does his his normal spiel. I thought the kiss aggressive kiss thing was like weird and awkward. And yeah, um like and that. and then uh the 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 son seems to be like holding but arm's length like okay maybe this will work maybe it's not but like i'm not i'm not signing off on this guy yet um am i misreading it were you you know what what did no you no see i here? felt the exact same way and i think like editing did a really good job because when chalk like kissed her i, I wrote haphazardly <laughs> in front of the the kids they they like edited um edited in some footage of um, Nick and it looked like Nick was like doing one of those faces, but yeah, it, yeah. you know, I think that was just good editing. Um, B, B, but yeah, B it, roll it really footage, sets yeah. you, yeah, it really sets you up to think, oh, like yeah, we're we're gonna get some grilling going on. Yep, um, we did not get any grilling. Uh, you know, they they end up going off. Um, and the son, which I did, you catch the son's name? I feel Nick. bad, not Nick. Okay, Nick. So Nick, along with Nick's fiance Brooke. Brooke. And um, they go uh, and talk to Chalk, and Chalk does Chalk things. I, when we see him on screen, he's just not that likable. But yeah. apparently, in person, he must really come across different in person, because the son warmed up pretty aggressively and pretty immediately. And I, like, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, so so the son son's on board. I, we didn't get the grilling. We didn't get any awkwardness. Ch Chuck and Nick have a nice moment where, you know, Nick is sort of saying, you know, my, my dad was an amazing guy. Like when, when thinking about someone to replace him, yada, yada. And Chuck, you know, clarifies like that, that whole concept of like, I'm not here to replace your, your dad. Um, I'm just here to make your mom happy and to love your mom for the rest of our lives and to have adventures. And, and like, that was such a good answer, like such a good like very re it was like the most likable I've ever found chalk, quite frankly, because it, it felt like very paternal, but in an appropriate way. And it mm -hmm. felt very also very genuine. And it seemed to be um, just exactly what Nick, you know, really needed to hear. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really liked that. And it kind of felt like, okay, chalk knows his place. And they've talked about this, like, it, it felt like this, this was very clear um, that this was what their life would be and what their relationship would be and what their roles would be. I agree. Chalk, it, the theme for this episode is Chalk nailing every verbal opportunity he had. We've mm -hmm. had some weird situations in the past with Chalk where it's like, ooh, I don't like what you're doing here. But every opportunity he had in this episode, he nailed. Basically mm -hmm. a nine or a 10 out of 10 every single time. Um, everything from you know, later on on the beach to how he handled the family. He, he just really well done across the board, um, mm -hmm. which is a little bit in contrast to what we're seeing in the, uh, in the face to camera in the moment stuff where he's just demonstrating a little bit more like insecurity and whatnot. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, he, he clearly just presents really well in person in a way that just the camera's not capturing, you know, or yeah, production and we've is said that even from their first one-on-one -on -one date, like he just doesn't read well like on screen. And again, that probably has a lot to do with him, his like guardedness in general, like and, and yeah. lack of vulnerability. He, he must just, and we're also seeing better. small snippets yeah. of, yeah, they were together for hours. Nick, yeah. Nick said, um, yeah. Yeah. Nick also had a really nice moment with, with Joan. Um, at the beginning, I was a little anxious because, you know, Joan was telling the kids before Chuck showed up, like, you know, honestly, like this has been really hard and, you know, thinking about your dad a lot and, you know, I've really been struggling. And, and Nick says, well, that's refreshing to hear <laughs> that she that um, and <laughs> I was like, OK, well, and I bet I bet it was um, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, and then they they later after, you know, um, Nick has a chance to talk with Chalk. Um, we see a nice moment with um, with Nick and Joan where, um, you know, she's telling him like, you know, gosh, I was so nervous um, that you guys were going to be mad at me for for moving on or question whether or not I, I really loved your dad. And um, and he just like tells her exactly what she needs to hear and says, mm -hmm. you realize how proud your kids are of you, right, for doing this. Um, he says, for your strength that lifted us up so that we could lift you up. Like it was such a beautiful moment. It brought me to tears watching it. It was 
it was one of those um, like role reversal moments in a way where like the student mm-hmm. becomes the teacher. It was it was really beautiful and it, it really what she needed to hear, I think, in order to feel like she really had the permission to kind of take this step. Yes, these were moments that I think play well, but here's where I'm going to maybe give a bit of a hot take. I was disinterested and I was bored. And the reason for that is that everything that was said is exactly what I would expect. If you were going to script a bad comedy romance, this is exactly what the the script would say. I feel like it's just something we've seen in every rom-com and in every season of this. It's just, and and so at some point in time, I'm just like, I, I just, I'd like some diversity. I'd like something new. I'd like a different take on it. I'd like, I would like for Nick to walk in and be like, you are not my dad. Get out. Right. Or something. Just give me something new. Um, we'll get that on so, the yeah, bachelor. Get- Don't worry. Like we're, <laughs> we're going to get that in a couple of weeks. So all of this to say this family visit goes, goes very well. And then they have their last chance date which as you put it, isn't very much of a date. They just kind of get together and debrief about the day and spend any last time together before the proposals. Um, and and something kind of controversial in our house happens um, mm, that I think yeah. we should talk about. So Chuck presents her with a key and this key doesn't go to, we don't know what it goes to, probably the cabin, um, but it's a symbol of the home that they are going to buy together in New York City, which, by the way, we live 45 minutes outside of New York City. I work in Manhattan. Don't come to New York City. It's 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 on its last legs. Um, but this is a symbol of what they're what um, they uh, the home that they're going to have together um, after he proposes and she accepts. Um, it appears to me that you don't like this. Could you could you talk up to me and tell me a little bit why you thought this was not? A great well, it's so talk. funny because you just got done talking about how this whole beautiful moment between, you know, son and mother was so cliche, so overdone, been there, done that. We see this guy give her a key. Uh, to your point, who knows what it goes to? He probably sent some intern from the art department to go to the nearest hardware store and grab any key that he could put on a heart keychain. This is, this is, just words. Show me with your actions. This means nothing. You know what makes it mean even less? That we heard nothing about it at the after the final rose. Not one question. So have you started apartment hunting in New York City? Well, that's no. Jesse's fault. You know why? That's, that's... Because it's an empty, it's it's empty. It's empty. It's the same as being presented with an empty ring box and saying, this, take this as a symbol of what I want to give to you when I can do it, when it's the right time, yada, yada. It's just words. Show me the money, okay? <laughs> Show it okay. to me. This is why you. I think that you are incorrect in your analysis of this situation. Oh, you, you okay? could call me wrong. Go ahead. I, I, saw, I, I saw it. I saw it floating on your, I, on your lips. <laughs> I, this is why I think that you are incorrect in your analysis, okay? Um, okay. The, the, there's a few important distinctions here. And I talk about this in previous seasons. I don't think I've hit on it too much this season, but um, you're on the Bachelor series. There are limited, I talk about all the time, no, none of these people love each other because love are actions and you cannot demonstrate those actions on a show like this because you're not okay, put so in a position. Okay, so what's the action? Oh, hold, on, the hold, action? On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you cannot actually demonstrate the acts of love on this show because you mm-hmm. aren't put in a position to make sacrifices and thus all you have are really words and some very hollow actions. And, and you have to somehow, the, with the little opportunity you have, you have to somehow convince somebody that you are a person who is going to be willing to perform the acts of love, right? Now, so when you say it's all words, well, yeah, that the entire franchise is words. Also, I, you know, I, I want to point out when we talk about why love is blind, sometimes a more realistic view is because at least they have a couple of weeks out in the wild where they do have an opportunity to demonstrate acts of love, where they mm-hmm. do live together for a little while, right? And that, that's an important aspect. So now, so your complaint about it being all words, well, the entire show is all words. So you literally can say about that the entire thing. Now, going to your point about it being in like the empty box, like this, this is why the the comparison is flawed. When you present an empty box to somebody, what you are saying is, 
I am a man who is not yet prepared, uh, you know, and set up to be a provider for you. Can't afford a ring. I can't afford the most basic things that are required of me to be a provider. I could try and love you. I could, you know, you know, wait on you hand and foot, dote on you all day long. But at the end of the day, I am not in a position to be a provider for you. That is a major red flag. The most important thing a man can be is a provider for himself and for somebody else. Being a provider is literally what drives drives men. The most important thing for a man is to have purpose in life. I, and listen. the worst thing you could, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get it out. So, so when you present an empty box, what you're basically saying is I am not a provider. When you present it's a somebody- promise that I will be a provider. Okay, but you, you, you have no, you can't demonstrate it yet, right? At all. If you what come, is if a, I, what is a key on, to nowhere? Hold on. hold on. No, 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 no. Because it's not a key to, it's not a key to nowhere in, in a vacuum. He's providing a beautiful ring, right? Already. So he's already demonstrated through the ring. The ring is a demonstration that I can be a provider. That is what the ring the is. The ring right? is from Neil Lane. He didn't buy it. Uh, again, you have to consider it outside the confines okay. of the show. Listen, the here, ring here's what symbol. I think would have made it more meaningful. Here's what I think would have made it more meaningful. Okay. okay Go ahead. Fine. The key from the art department. But also you want to, you want to flex me your muscles of being a provider of being a well thought out of putting your money where your mouth is. Here are some neighbor. I, I did some research. Here are some neighborhoods based on what we've talked about that I think you can't have a enjoy. phone or a computer for the entire time. You think they're they on can't make that happen. They got him a key. Where do you think they got that from? <laughs> well, you know, I, the, the, I, I listen, I take your point that maybe he could have come with a little bit more research, but, but at, at the end of the day, here's it, the, the basic, my, my basic thesis here. Here's is a pencil. That one, this is a symbol that once we hit the next milestone in our lives and career, we're going to buy another home in another city that we want to live in here. Okay. Here we go. But that's not what he's saying, right? What he's saying is here's a ring that demonstrates that I'm a provider. And here is a key. This key symbolizes that we're about to go buy something. This is him not – because he please, can have the, a ring. The, wait, 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 The key came before the ring. Well, the key could be Because could, that's could the way the show is set up. As a ploy Again. to get the ring. Sure. Listen, listen. That's the way the show is set up. He's working within the constraints. And look, at, I hate that you're making me defend Chalk here. I hate that you're making me defend Chalk. <laughs> but but – I have, but I have to back the man up. The show sets the, 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 the parameters and sets the timeline for how he's able to interact. So he has to work within the confines of what he is given. The reality is he's basically saying, I am a provider. Here's a nice fancy looking ring that cost me a bunch of money that proves that I can be a provider. Oh, and by the way, this key is symbolizing the house that we're going to go buy. Not the, I can't afford a house. Yeah, I can't go and buy. I don't know. We haven't looked at houses together. I don't know where specifically you want to live. I, you know, and here's the thing. The ring is a symbol from the man to the woman, right? Uh, um, the, the home that you build though, the home that you build is something that you build together for him to just go out there and be like, Hey, I bought us a condo in New York City. Let's go. If I were the woman, I'd be like, wait, wait, wait. But the home is, this is ours together. This is something we need to do together. So you can't just, so so how does he execute on something saying, we are going to build a home together and I am also a provider that can afford a home to you. How does he demonstrate that in this situation, right? I just like, told you, bring some options of, of just reason. Mm -hmm. Research. Uh, listen, I'm not going to say, but but here's the thing. One, he might have done that, but that would make lousy TV, right? So even if he did do that, we wouldn't see it. Production's cutting that shit right away. So I'm just saying, it's it's possible that Chalk might have done that, and but but and we just don't know. I don't disagree that demonstrating some action to further your cause is a good thing. I I don't disagree with you there. I'm just saying I, I think you're being we, unfair and unrealistic given okay. the constraints of the show. Okay. I I see what you're saying. But you are taking this one action in isolation. I am thinking about it in the context of everything else we know about this man, which is that he has the tendency to overstate and overinflate. Sure, he's he's a love bomby guy, and he's and he's a, 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 he's got gamesmanship galore. And so, how am I to believe, based on what we've seen from from Chuck on the show? We don't apparently he's he's lovely, you know. That this is not another 
chess piece that he is moving across this board to win Joan. That's been that's been what we've been talking about for the mm-hmm. last several weeks. So how can you think that this is genuine in any way? That's why I think I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it in the totality I, of the last at, eight weeks, nine weeks. I think it's fair to question Shock as a character, right? I, and, and if you want to sit there and, and argue about whether or not Shock himself means it or whether this game's, I think that's a it's a perfectly valid debate to have. I'm just saying, in the context of this action, in in just in isolation, itself, in isolation, I think that is Feels vastly like you're different. backpedaling your argument here. No, Feels like I, think I just won. No, I, 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 I think you're trying to change the parameters of the argument. The at the end of the day, that's what my if, assessment is based put, on. It's, it's based put, on the totality of the actions, not an isolation. Sure. How, Look at what kind of therapist you're never would I get be? Me, you're never going to get me to sit there and say that Chalk. I think Chalk is a super genuine guy who's not, you know, trying to win the game more than he is trying to 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 actually find love. Like I'm with you all there. All I'm saying is, if you're comparing. Handing a key saying this key represents the the home that we're going to go buy, you know, when we get done with this show versus here's an empty ring box. I just don't think that those are comparable. I think those are two very different situations. They convey two completely different sentiments, Um, you know, and so I think in a vacuum, you know, you cannot those are non comparable situations. They they, that that's my that's my thing. Now, if you're asking me, do I think chalk? really intends to go and buy a place with him and, and Joan in New York City? I actually do, because I think Chalk is the type of person where that type of shit matters to him. He's going to win the game, and this is all part of winning the game. So I think he's actually genuine. Now, is he really in love? Who the fuck knows? I don't know, right? Do I think that you know when they get off this show and after all the lights have dimmed a little bit, do I think that suddenly when the game's done, like he loses a little interest? Probably, right? Because he'll be on to his next whatever his next um, challenge is, right? That's the, that's the nature of, of, of people like Chuck. I, I will never dispute any of that. that uh, I, you know, so if you want to look at it and say, well, yeah, Chuck, Chuck sucks, and this is all just a game, like, eh, okay. But it still doesn't take away from the fact that- I didn't say Chuck sucks. I said I'm, the, I episode. rolled my eyes <laughs> when the key, fake key was presented because it just feels like, more of the same we're just again at level nine now like and and i mean if if somebody is watching this podcast for the first time um and and you know they're like wow these two people um chris when did you present amy with an empty box have i ever presented (laughs) you with an empty box i don't think so right um no, one could argue that you dangled engagement in front of me for three years but i was cool with that i did not dangle i gave you options I you had, said, hey, this is the same. Maybe that's what I'm reacting to. You said, do you want to get engaged or do you want to buy a place? And I picked no, buy a place no, 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 every no, no, time. No. I said, the amount of money that I have in my bank account can either buy you an engagement ring and pay for a wedding, or it can be a down payment on a house. Pick. And you picked, picked a house. house. And yeah. so we went and we pursued the house house kind of fell through. I changed jobs. And then, so we put a pause on everything. And then once I was back at the new job, I asked you again, gave you the same thing again. Like again, the amount of money in the bank account can do one or the other. You pick, you can, I I don't care which one you pick. You pick whichever one you want. Again, the second time you picked house, we went and did the house thing again. Again, couldn't quite find the house we wanted and didn't work out, changed jobs again. And then it was the third time where I presented you the option. You picked engagement. So we got engaged and got married. And then, oddly enough, we, bought, we ended up buying a house like three months after getting married because the house finally that we wanted came on the market. So, like, the, I it, I had X amount of money that would buy one or the other. I gave you the option. I was happy with whichever one you picked, and you picked between the two options. Just you can never lay. That. You can never lay that. There. Listen, you can never lay that on my feet face. that I dangled anything. You could have whichever you could only have one at the time. You gave me my own key, afford. my own key to to some to 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 a to a New York City apartment. Actually, maybe maybe that's what all of this is. It was actually going to be own- a Brooklyn condo. That's where that's where we were, <laughs> we were looking at Brooklyn condo. Thank God that that we didn't end up doing that. Um, yeah, it all worked yeah, out. It all, it all worked, worked out. out great. Yeah. yeah. And listen, you know, I, I mean, I, I, in 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 therapy speak, what is happening right now is perhaps that I'm having a little bit of counter transference. <laughs> to uh to the the chalk key situation because maybe it is reminding me of 
that experience. So I, I actually don't feel sour about it at all. I don't, you know. They were your I, choices. I, I, happily, I, I, yeah. I happily chose my choice. I, I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't in a rush to get engaged. I, I would have happily married you if you picked marriage the first time. I know. Right? I, hey, I, I'm happy. It all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what the best part of this being the season finale is? What's that? that this is like the last time that we're going to have to record remote for a long time. So now we're going to be able to go back to recording. You know, like like the show should move back to Mondays, hopefully, where we'll both be in the same state every week. You know, I guess we'll still have to do some dancing with the stars uh, stuff remote, but but yeah, I don't know when the next season is. But all of this to say, clearly, Chris and I agree to disagree on the the key. Um, so we'd love for you to weigh in in the comments. Yeah, listen, you- who who won this debate? Where do you come down? Was the key tacky and insincere gamesmanship, or was it? Um, you know, if somebody presented you with a key in this situation, would you be happy, sad? Would you consider it like a, like an empty box? Um, and you know, in those comments, after you say who won the argument, explain to Amy why it was me. (laughs) I'm fine conceding. Listen, I'm not a sore loser. Oh, don't you dare concede before. (laughs) Like that. I see what you're doing. Listen, audience, you don't fall for that. Okay. I, I I mean, I disagree with you, but I can imagine that I might be on an island over here. But you know what? That's okay. I, I'm I'm going to – I, like Joan, am strong in my values and am strong in my purpose, and I feel strong about my 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 position here. So it's okay. I'm it's okay. literally going to have an empty box for when you get home. <laughs> it's going to be sitting on the counter. It's going to be gift-wrapped. I'm going to have a nice little, you know, a nice little bow on it and everything. Yep. <laughs> All right, so shall we move on to maybe the most fun of the episode we've had in weeks? And that is poor guy just getting run the hell over. Oh, man. I was like, man. oh, are we going to talk about the women crying in, in oh, the Bachelor oh, man. teaser? Okay. No, he was died, so died. happy, didn't see this coming at all. But like, oh. look, we've all known it's chalk. The only yeah. person who didn't know it's chalk is Guy. And mm. Guy is preparing for his opportunity to go meet her family. In her, in her, in the moment, she's basically like, "Yeah, it's shock. I'm gonna let guy go. I'm not putting him mm-hmm. or my family through this. There's no point." I, I maintain. I said it a long time ago. This would have been a much harder conversation if it was Jonathan or if it was Keith, and that's why Jonathan and Keith were sent home earlier because she's known as shock, and it would have been. I think it would have been a really bad look if she sent Jonathan home in the way she sent guy home. I think she can get away with it with with a guy. I don't think she gets away with it and comes out looking good with with uh Jonathan. And that I think is one of the big reasons strategically why Jonathan felt like he went home too early. And to some degree or another, Keith as well, because he got the first impression rose, right? So um, she and Keith had zero connection. I I, I don't uh, I mean I don't they, think they, they, they started that. with some decent chemistry and then it just sort of fell off when he he kind of fell apart, right? But um but yeah so she shows up at his little bungalow on the water um and you know he's giddy as can be like bouncing off the walls and he just doesn't, doesn't see it coming. Yeah, She's like, guy. he doesn't in. know that when, when the lead shows up early, it's bad news. It's, that oh was yeah. Sad. If the lead shows up where she's not supposed to be. Nope. Yeah. Shit's about to go down. And I mean, you could just see in his face, you know, and, and she tried to be as gentle as she could be. Um, but you could just see that moment where he realized what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And it just it deflated. It, deflated and then the ugly sobbing crying was i mean it was beautiful to watch because it was like the first time in weeks where it was like oh we got something awkward something uncomfortable going on here i felt bad for guy like anytime you see a good guy just get run the hell over and he didn't see it coming you feel for him right but at the same time it was like this was needed happy it kind of happened um i wish he maybe you know didn't didn't ugly cry, you know. Let let the tear fall um, a little bit, but uh, that's not that's not his yeah. ugliest moment of the episode, though. That's still still to come. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I I want to give Guy the benefit of the doubt here. Okay, I don't think Guy is delusional. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to believe try and that. defend that point. <laughs> well, it's just you know I I can't I can't think that he's a totally delusional guy. Like we've mm-hmm. seen him in 
like really nice moments with the other men. And so I have to think that that there are parts of this journey with Joan that we just haven't seen. Mm-hmm. You know, for Joan to say some of the things that she said to him lead me to believe that they did actually have a connection that, again, we're just not able to see. For him to genuinely believe that it could be them or he could be the guy, like, we have we have to be missing something. Mm-hmm. Maybe he just doesn't read well on camera. I don't know. Yeah, I have never understood it at all from their mm-hmm. first date, their cooking date, which came late in the season, yeah. which they said it went amazing. And we watched it on camera and didn't feel like there was any chemistry to um, the handful of group date experiences in which he didn't really seem to stand out in any meaningful way. Like mm-hmm. never understood it. Ne- you know, so, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't get it. I think if there was something there, pro- production had the incentive to make this look closer than it was. Right. Mm -hmm. And they didn't do that. So why didn't they do that? The only reason I can I can conclude is because there wasn't anything to show that this actually was it. You know, production benefits and the show benefits from a tight horse race here. Right. And so like they they want to give it to us that that tension right that that question that's what gets buzz going like i can't imagine social media has been like hey talking and hypothesizing uh, you know hypothesizing about who's going to win this show everyone's known for weeks right um it also i think disincentivizes viewership um and just and deflates hype so like they're they're a really incentivized to want this to feel closer than it actually was so the only thing i can conclude is that they just did not have footage that would make this seem closer right Mm -hmm. so i like i hear you when you say you know maybe we're just not seeing something but then i would go back and say well why didn't production show it to us why did they work against their own best interest does somebody in Mm -hmm. production want this show to get canceled right is that is that is that what's going on i I don't know i don't i don't know i mean but if that's the case then i'm i'm really concerned about guy yeah I, I just, I can't wrap really my head around it, but you know, we, we do get the opportunity after this, uh, to, they go to the couch, um, and they have a, you know, kind of a, I don't, I, well, I guess I ask you, was this nice? Was this awkward? Where did this fall for you? That this interaction? Um, I felt very awkward to me. I didn't really understand what they were saying to one another. They both. Mm-hmm said a lot of words, um, but they didn't really seem to connect very well. There were some things that Joan said that I was like, wait, what? Um, but I mean, and and it sounds like Guy also didn't really get like the closure he was looking for because he did, we, we saw him kind of say to uh, Jesse, like, oh, can I say one more thing? And Jesse didn't even notice um, that he mm-hmm. asked. And, and so I don't know if it was nice. It felt awkward to me, but yeah, I mean, uh, to me, it came across as really pathetic in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And I, my question to you is, how, on a scale of one to ten, how unattractive was it when Guy said, "So what? What was missing, or what? What didn't I do?" Like to Joe, it's been months. He wasn't selected. He already mm-hmm. ugly cried, mm-hmm. right? And now he comes across with a. Well, well, a little bit of a pick me, like, well, what didn't I do? What, what could have I done different? It's like, dude, this is probably what you could have done different was my take on it. Like, this is the yeah. worst question to ask. And I don't care if you're a man or a woman, this, never ask this question ever. Like, it's just, it's never going to come across good. It's always going to be a bad look. No one's ever right. going to tell you the truth. They don't have an obligation to tell you the truth. And yeah. you look pathetic. You're, where am I, where am I wrong here? Yeah. I mean, listen, that that's um that's a harsh take but i do agree with what you let off with was you know him asking this question was in essence what was missing the ent- they defined their relationship as this um like slow burn what contributes to a slow burn when when you're not putting yourself out there enough to take a risk and maybe get rejected and i think that guy didn't lead with much authenticity for himself. I think he just wanted to try to be who Joan wanted him to be. And so like this whole idea of what did I do wrong? What was I missing? Like, no, that's a really insecure question. People Um, respond to confidence. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, and it told me a lot about how he like played the game that he was, he was trying to like fit into her mold rather than just put himself out there like with his full chest and, and potentially get rejected. And, and that I think is, I mean, Joan says it later, like it finding love in, in later in life or at any point in life is not just about hope. It's also about taking action and taking a risk um, in order to try to get it. And it didn't feel like Guy took very many risks here. And his this question was good evidence of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I think that this summarized for me all the reasons why Guy was not going to be Joan's pick. But but then Joan does him a disservice by by giving him a really confusing answer. Because she, she, I tried to follow what she was saying, but, and so I got bits of it. Um, she said, he said, was there something missing? And he said, and she said, actually, it's kind of the opposite. You know, timing was always our issue. We were a slow burn. Um, in any other situation, it would have been you. We just needed more time. What? Yes, I caught that. And I thought it was quite confusing. Also, she answered his question in it. The, the the answer is you were too slow. That's what it was. What was I missing? You were slow. That's what you were mm -hmm. missing. It wasn't the exact opposite. Like what is he, what are you even talking about? It's that you're on a time crunch. You were guarded. Well, yeah. it, and 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 it was that their connection was slow. He was too fast. There his because she was right that was there something missing? It was the opposite. He was too much when they didn't have enough of a connection to. Mm -hmm or foundation to like uphold it like chalk I, it, he was a lot too but they had a connection where you could kind of sense it and lean into it a little bit more and try to feel it and try to try to imagine it with mm -hmm. with guy like it's 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 both uh too much and too little it's uh too little shared connection and too much expression of love based on that mm -hmm. yeah i agree with you and the timelines didn't match up for any of that um, yeah. So I guess she said, she basically says by the time you caught up, my heart already belonged to somebody else. And that's like, again, it, it's, it, it's this weird view of love that it's so finite. Like it, again, the, going back to the lucky in love, lucky in love assumes that there's only, but so much love to go around. So you need to, you know, grab it or to find a way to get it while it, while it's hot, you know? And same here. It's like, wait, that's not how love works. Also, I, I just... if he got caught up, then like, like there's a logistical problem here. Is like, if he got caught up, it doesn't really matter if you're in love with somebody else already. He got caught up. So how mm -hmm. are you choosing between two? Just because he got there first? Well, why does that matter? Right? And that would be kind of my counter right. argument here. It's like, that. Yeah. So if I got caught up, then why are, aren't we flipping a coin between two of us? Why, why, you know, he must still right. be ahead. Chuck must still be ahead if you're picking him and not me. If we're at the right. finale now and we're and I've caught up to him. Right. Well, back in the bungalow, you know, he had asked, like, is there any chance that you will change your mind? Or like, are you sure? Basically that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And she was like, again, repeats my heart. You also know, a already pathetic belongs question, to but yeah. Yeah. Someone else. Um, yeah, this was, this was uh, sad. I felt, I felt sad. I felt yeah. sad for Guy, like mm -hmm. in um in like a unflattering way. Um, but but who knows? Maybe he'll be. I mean, people really people in our comments really love Guy. I mean, they think he's great. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's an attractive guy. He's and seems like a nice guy. We've liked him at the beginning of this season. We just didn't he's get just, a lot. He's from just him. so boring. I look. But look. Maybe, I think. You know, I think he's a guy. Like guys want to have guy around in their circle yeah. of friends because he's a nice guy, you know, he's non-threatening, but he's also mm -hmm. dependable. Right. And he just checks off a lot of boxes for what you'd want in a male friend. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, are women really lining up? I, I, is he really making women super excited? Like, I, I just don't, I don't know. I, don't I mean, know again, I think that... this is like, let's, let's throw it to the, to the audience. Like, how would you feel about Guy being our next Bachelor, Golden Bachelor? Would that I still, would that be I a season that you'd want to watch? Pascal would be a far more interesting season. Mm. Who's noticeably absent tonight? Yes, yeah. I mean, 
honestly, I want Jackie's going to be awesome when Jack's the next Golden <laughs> Bachelor. Awesome. Think about it. He'll have. I all love the that they like, they sat Jack next ball. to Susan, Susan and Kathy. <laughs> like what a trio! I think that's oh, yeah. great. I just I just want there. I want Jack to be the Golden um, Bachelor next, just so that he can make the women do cannonball competitions. Whoever gets the best cannonball, like gets the extra time with them. It's going to be awesome. And they're going to sit in a hot tub together that he didn't get to go into last time. It's going to be perfect. Mm. I can't wait. The this bathtub, you mean? The bat, yeah, the, the jet bathtub, yeah. So, but okay, so let's let's move it along a little bit here. So obviously, we are now at the proposal. We there's only one guy left, and this guy has been very vocal about his interest. He's starting to shed some uh, or, or or demonstrate some insecurity about the fact that Joan has not said that she loves him back. But this, again, is sort of that, it's the nonsense that, that the contestants always say, but we all know the lead can't say. It's like against the rules. We all know this. So none of these insecurities are ever really feel genuine because like we all know what the rules are. They're not allowed to say it. So tough, tough nuggets. Um, so we get down to, the, uh, the, the, down to the, the dock. Jesse and Chalk have a quick discussion. Anything interesting here? Don't I don't care. think so. Nope, don't care at all. We get to the beach, and this is where Chalk, this was Chalk's shining moment. He walks right up there, gives her the hug, gives her the kiss, and then goes straight into effectively his vows and nailed it. I thought he touched on all the important things. He touched on their, their um, uh, 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 you know, first um, spouses um, and how they're not being replaced, how they're looking down on them, um, talked about what he likes about her. And here's the important thing, and I, we haven't talked about this enough. Joan is beautiful, like not yeah. for a 61 year old woman. Period. Gorgeous, yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. Notice the one thing that he never talks about her beauty. He talks about all of her other qualities. And mm-hmm. I, I when I when I talk to single um, male friends who are dating, this is something that I always advise when somebody when a woman asks you what you like about them, you want to say they're pretty. But that's the last thing you want to say. You want to talk about all their non-physical features first. And Chalk nailed that. And that I always think is really important because psychologically that is conveying, you know, you list things in an order that um, conveys priority to you. And what he basically said was the quality of her character, the, 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 you know, the, the, the values that she has and, and how she treats other people are the things he values. Oh, and you also happen to be gorgeous at the same time. Um, but that's like the least important thing about why I'm, uh, why I'm in love with you. Nailed it. Even down to the, the idiosyncratic nuances of the speech. Shining moment yeah. for him in my mind. My he opinion. did great. I have I've no notes. I mean, he did. It was beautiful. It was really nice. Yeah. This, uh, so in, in kind of contrast, Jones was fine. Like it was good, but it was like compared to Chalks, it was kind of like, like, that was like one was an A and. You know, I would have given you a B on the other one, but just by comparison, it's like when somebody nails nails the exam, your your B suddenly looks a little bit more like a C plus, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I was I was having a lot of um empathy for Joan. I, I got I got really tearful actually watching the proposal because I was imagining myself in Joan's position. Like, God forbid if you if you die early, um, like just imagining loving somebody else and like, and f- letting those words escape my mouth, like for the first time, like how overwhelming that must be to, to actually love someone else. Um, mm-hmm. I, I was, I was really like in my feelings about it. And, uh, and I know she said like, she woke up on that day and, and thought of John and, and was happy. Um, and, you know, realizes that she can have room for, for both loves in her life, but what a what a new and overwhelming experience that must be um for her. So I, I was kind of giving her a pass on her vows mm-hmm. uh in that sense. So after the proposal, we end up back on the couch. Um I don't think that there was anything uh super interesting here. We get a few more kind of montages. Um they send they, they announce that they're sending both the families collectively down to uh Disneyland uh or Disney World, whichever one's in Florida. Um, and that's kind of the season, um, you know, I, and, and that's all she wrote. They seem happy. I think I'm going to be optimistic here and say that I think that they are going to last longer than 
Gary and Teresa lasted. And I'll even say significantly longer, like multiples longer. They may have already that. lasted longer than Gary and Teresa. I forget when when Joan season wrapped, but they've been together for a couple months, I think. Yeah, but they haven't but but they've they've only uh like had five four day trips together, right? Weekends mm-hmm. together. So like once mm-hmm. they once it's out in the public and, and whatnot, I feel like that's a changes the the the, the dynamics, right? But yeah, but yeah. So uh Last thing we get is really just a, a quick uh, cameo of Grant talking. Grant is slightly, so handsome. Yes, very handsome. Slightly getting better with the PR stuff. Needs mm-hmm. a little more practice, but otherwise I think mm-hmm. he's getting a little better. Yeah, Grant, yeah, very handsome. Looked great. Another green suit. Here we are. Green is, green is the new black. Apparently that's it. what I'm seeing. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, his season looks great. I'm super excited. I January 27th can't come soon enough. I'm all right. Very, very happy. So for those of you who are very interested in dancing with the stars recaps as well, um, we have Joey and we had Jen. She's now been eliminated, um, but we are going to post it as a separate video. Um, apparently I like talking about ballroom dance more than I like talking about the bachelor. And so those were going too long to continue to include them as a ending segment um, for, for here. So go and check out our videos on that. So I think that's a wrap. Shall you take we us did. out of here? Bachelorette season one in the books. Um, it was fun for most of the season. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you to all of you for being with us on this journey alongside Joan. We appreciated having you here. As we said at the top of our episode, we're not done. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be back next week with more. And um, back between now and Grant season in January with with much more fun stuff coming your way. We always love hearing from you. So please email us at reactivitytv at revivecfw.com or drop in the comments what you might want us to cover next, whether it's a show, a movie, any particular relationship, anything that you might want to hear our takes on, let us know. You can also follow along with us on Instagram at reactivitytv. You can follow me at LCSW. But we will be back with more next time. And don't forget to check out our Dancing with the Stars recap as well, also on our Reactivity TV channel. We will see you soon. Have a great rest of the week. Take care. Bye. See you in January.